Back in April, we introduced the brand new Maya with a goal. Give Filipinos what they need to master their money, all in one app. We weren't kidding when we said that wasn't everything. Today, we're ready to share even more ways for you to take control of your money. Here's everything new with Maya for July 2022. The hype around Maya savings is real. We're excited for more people to enjoy our 6% interest rate, which is now available to everyone with a complete Maya account. What's more, all users with savings are instantly upgraded to power users. So you can cash in up to 500,000 pesos to your wallet and give your deposits a serious boost. We heard some great feedback from Maya's early access. You told us that saving could be a lot easier if you knew exactly what you were saving for. Our solution is a new feature called Personal Goals. From your savings dashboard, you can create a goal that lets you set a name, how long you have, and how much you need to make. Keep up to five goals at a time and see how everything's progressing at a glance. Not only does Personal Goals let you organize and budget your money, it also rewards you with a 6% interest. Jackpot! Hit your goals out of the park with Personal Goals, available when you update your app today. For all you fearless crypto traders, we have news from space. Five new currencies have just been cited in the Maya app. You can now invest in a total of 15 coins for you to diversify your folio. Meanwhile, the new Maya design continues to roll out in the app. You'll find new parts of your wallet now sport a smarter look that's as easy to use and navigate as the rest of the app. Together with these big updates, you'll find extra quality of life changes to help you manage your money more flexibly. In the future, expect new ways to express yourself with your money. Plus, keep an eye out for something dark on the horizon. Until next time. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> I am Jan Encina from Maya and uh, would like to uh, thank the Information Security Officers Group for having me today. Uh, and uh, this is a topic that uh, we are very much excited uh, because uh, if you you know that Maya is actually offering a crypto service, type, so technically we are in the metaverse. So uh, it's very important to uh, talk about uh, this topic because uh, metaverse presents a lot of possibilities, which we will talk about later. Uh, and um, later on, we're going to see how it impacts our everyday lives. Uh, very exciting for um, for everyone. And um, we, uh, again, thank you for uh, allowing me to uh, become part of this event. Uh, but before we go to the metaverse, uh, I really wanted to uh, introduce the company first. So Maya uh, is the all-in-one money platform bringing Filipinos bolder <clears throat> uh, bolder ways to master their money. So um, as, as, as you know, um, we have rebranded from Pay Maya Philippines to Maya. Uh, and um, the reason for that is that... Uh, we really want to become everything in the bank. Um, Pay Maya Philippines is still existing as an entity. Uh, it's still handling the wallet, but then we also have Maya Bank already, uh, which we have launched this year, and um, that will complete an entire ecosystem of uh, financial services that was that um, really envision to be serving the country. Uh, and uh, if you're going to look at the ecosystem, uh, this is how uh, we this is how we look right now. Uh, we have more than 50 million uh, registered users. Uh, and um, we have we have more than 650 uh, Maya save accounts opened already uh, within three months after launch. So very exciting uh, times for us. Uh, and um, we're still the number one uh, fully integrated payments processor uh, for key industries. And um, we have more than 760,000 points of acceptance for merchants. And uh, and the Maya and the uh, Maya centers that we call them now Maya centers uh, used to be called Smart Padala uh, is still the widest agent network um, co uh, covering 6 65,000 uh, touch points. Uh, and uh, as mentioned, we're one of six of the of the um, digital banks that were approved to operate by the BSP. Uh, and uh, our no matter how how, how far we, we rebrand, our vision will still be the same uh, to be the number one financial services ecosystem in the Philippines. Um, and that's really delivered through our cutting edge technology. And um, our mission is to empower uh, every Filipino enterprise consumer. And uh, we want everyone to really be thriving in the digital economy. So thank you for uh, that time to um, introduce Maya. But now let's really go to uh, the metaverse. Uh, this is how I'm going to structure my talk. 
uh, we're going to talk about the metaverse as the next frontier, uh, why it matters to everyday users, to the governments, to businesses, uh, to the economy. Uh, and uh, as with every new opportunity, it will always have risks, right? Uh, so we're going to talk about the, the metaverse as a cyber cyber battleground, uh, why it impacts um, security, privacy, uh, and uh, how can we save the metaverse uh, in, in, in that sense, uh, meaning um, as security professionals, uh, what's our role? Uh, what should we be thinking about? So I'm not here really to present solutions. Metaverse is an evolving topic. It it will always um, have its own set of challenges, which we will, we will see later. Uh, but then um, <clears throat> this, I want to share my insights on yeah. how uh, we can participate uh, in this new ecosystem. And uh, I want to kick off my talk uh, by uh, quoting Mr. Sundan, Sundar Pichai, the Google CEO, that it's always, been it's always been obvious to me that computing over time will adapt to people rather than people adapting to computers. So uh, what is the metaverse? Um, uh, basically, what happens, the, me the metaverse is really the internet on a whole new experience, on, on a whole new experience. I think that's the key word, uh, meaning that uh, if you're, when uh, when you're right now when you're when everyone's working at home you know you do you open you open your messenger open your chat your chat applications your email to communicate with other employees right but in the metaverse that's taken to a whole to a whole new different level you can you can go to virtual reality meetings really see the people that you are talking to uh, and um, really communicate as if as if um, they're they're beside you so that offers a totally different um, experience for uh, for the users and a lot of a lot more opportunities for um, for businesses so why immerse right uh, you want to, because you want to experience virtual communities life like meaning um, you you're not just talking to people just by chatting with them you don't you don't you don't just see you know the the lines of chats and exchanges uh, with uh, with the people that you're interacting with you see their avatar you see their online presence, right? Uh, so um, it will it really breeds life into the internet. And not only that, you can actually own a portion of the web, right? Uh, you can own properties and really make money. So if you've heard about the non-fungible tokens, cryptocurrency, these are these are things that allow you to um, actually engage in money making uh, in the in the um, in the metaverse. And it also offers really boundless uh, knowledge exchange and and learning. So. Uh, Previously, what the, the, the model for learning is that, that people go into a classroom, uh, there's the teacher, and then that's where they learn, right? So the metaverse is kind of changing that mindset. They're bringing, they're bringing the classroom to the, to the student. So imagine that uh, you want to train someone in, um, uh, in operating a sea vessel. So you don't need, an, you don't need a sea vessel uh, for you to be trained. What you will do is to run a virtual reality application, and then you can go into a sea vessel with your classmates, with your instructors, running your drills, and uh, and really brings about a lot of possibilities and in terms of uh, learning reach, right? And it also facilitates really boundless knowledge exchange because uh, you you don't just learn by reading the textbooks, you don't just learn by um, you know going into Google and um, and learning from the internet, you learn from your peers. And the thing is, since it's a, it has virtual a virtual reality um, um, aspect, you don't just chat them. You really see their you really see their avatars as if you are in the same classroom, as if you are in that sea vessel. Um, and uh, imagine the possibilities that that can really bring if uh, if it's being uh, up to scale, right? Uh, and um, um, there's really and the metaverse actually also fosters stronger bonds within the participants because uh, uh, since it's lifelike, it's just like talking to um, uh, to your to your peers in person. Uh, it it kind of it kind of gives you a better trust uh, in in, uh, in 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 one another, uh, and it also helps you understand each other better. And the metaverse is really changing our lives, right? Um, uh, uh, um, according to studies, worldwide cryptocurrencies adoption is up by 880 percent, 2020 versus 2021. Uh, and the uh, metaverse has really opened new businesses and work possibilities, right? So uh, probably um, some a few decades ago, you will not hear 
um, the job description. You will never see a role in your company called a blockchain engineer, right? You will not see that. You will not see a role called a virtual reality moderator. Uh, no, uh, it just, but it just open. But having the metaverse really opens up a lot of business opportunities and work for uh, a lot of people. So you will see that uh, there will be um, new demand for new skill sets. Um, companies are going to start thinking about um, uh, where, uh, where, where, where they want to invest in the metaverse. Which part of the metaverse are they gonna create a new metaverse on by itself? Right. So. It's very important to um, um uh, for professionals like us to keep to keep on upscaling ourselves, right? To catch up with these trends. Governments are uh, exploring uh, the delivering meta uh, public services through the metaverse. So, uh, uh, in the cases of in the case of South Korea, right? Uh, I think that they're one of the first who will uh, really delve into uh, into creating a government metaverse. Uh, and um, uh, an interesting application, uh, I believe, in the United States. Uh, would be um, homeless people don't have IDs, don't have validate, uh, they they don't have uh, identities. They were actually given a blockchain address so that um, uh, they will so that uh, they uh, they will be identified and be offered government services so because uh, they know they know who they are. Uh, and uh, I put the most obvious thing in the last of the bullets, but yeah, this is where it's all started, right? That gaming is no longer just gaming; it's a way of life, right? It's a way of interaction. Uh, you don't just game to play. You can play to earn, right? Uh, and uh, you've seen a lot. You've seen a lot of applications um, um, in for for that for that aspect, uh, and it will just continue to grow. So, and uh, really, um, you're only bound by the limits of your uh, imagination. Be anyone you wanna be. You can choose an avatar. You know, make it look like you. Uh, and um, be anywhere that you wanna be, as long as the metaverse, as long as it's within that metaverse that you're in. Um, you can explore that and uh, really meet everyone else uh, in the metaverse. And the best part of it, again, is make, really make money uh, while doing all this. But then uh, you start thinking, right? Uh, so I'm in re in concept. I'm actually going into a new community. It's a new way of life. And um, being security a security professional, there's really one just one question in our minds, right? Is the metaverse safe? Um, and uh, that's um, and these are the these are the topics that we're going to talk about today. So there's really no one metaverse, right? Uh, there are closed metaverses, uh, meaning that uh, once you get in there, they won't interact with other metaverses. That's pretty that's pretty much it. But some are open. Um, and, uh, there, some some met some metaverses have the have the capability to actually interact with each other, uh, and um, that opens up a lot of. Um, Questions in terms of identity, in terms of um, how, in terms of how can I um, be, how can I be sure that uh, the person I'm talking to in Metaverse One is still the same person I'm talking to in Metaverse Two, right? Uh, and um, of course, most metaverses are cloud native, meaning they're really born in the internet. Uh, they and uh, if you if you think about that, the same threats that are impacting uh, your cloud applications, your cloud infrastructure. Are the same, so they are also subject to zero day vulnerabilities. They can be attacked. Um, they <clears throat> you have to take care of your attack surface, which we will try to talk about later. Uh, and um, if you talk, uh, probably a unique feature of a met of uh, of um, metaverse security is that it will have a very wide attack surface. So when I say attack surface, we're talking about the point possible points of entry because if you run an application in the cloud, you're probably you, you probably you're probably in iOS, you're probably in Google, right? So <clears throat> your attack surface is kind of limited. It's limited only to your uh, to your backend infrastructure and to the devices where your applications are installed. But the metaverse doesn't work like that, right? Uh, um, on, on top of your infrastructure, on top of the devices, you will have mobile gaming consoles, right? You will um, you will have IOTs, you will have VR headsets, you will have uh, you will have all of the all of the other gadgets that actually connect to the metaverse. So if you look if you look at it, there's really a very wide um, attack surface, and there's a lot of entry points that uh, you you need to address. And the problem with all of this is that uh, most security solutions are actually right now geared to protect your backend, your applications, but it will not protect IoT. Right, um, 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 meaning that uh, there are 
um, the IoT companies will have to protect themselves, uh, which, which opens up a lot of problems in terms of security and uh, really concerns, right? Uh, and uh, here's the thing, not all metaverse participants are there to, you know, just um, uh, just socialize, uh, do the gaming themselves, meet other people, educate. No, they're there for a very particular bad reason and not all people in the metaverse are innocent. So just pretty much like the internet, right? Uh, not all people that you meet in Facebook are innocent. <laughs> some of them are scammers. Some of them want your, want, want your information. Some of, some of them will try to defraud you, right? So it's pretty much the same uh, in, in, in terms of metaverse. And we really can't, uh, we really can't, um, uh, cannot not talk about privacy in the metaverse because uh, there are a lot of questions so that that needs and that needs to be answered. Like, who can track your activities while you're in the metaverse? It, um, I mean, if you if you think about it, every single movement uh, that you do in the metaverse, you speak to someone, you trade with someone, you open something, that's all tracked, right? Uh, and um, uh, we have and um, companies need to ensure that they're very transparent in the data that they collect from the customers. Uh, how much do they process? How much do they analyze? And most importantly, right? How much do they share uh, with their third parties? Because um, uh, there, 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 there's always uh, this quote uh, in uh, in the digital um, space that uh, if you're using a service and it's free, you're probably the product. Right. Uh, so as users, you need to be you need to understand what data what data are you permitting to share, uh, and um, and uh, are you okay as a user that uh, the company will actually do what they say they will do uh, with your data. Uh, and uh, if you think about it, the metaverse uh, offers you really boundless opportunities uh, to communicate to go. So if I'm interacting a user uh, with a user in the UK. Uh, I'm a, or I'm also interacting with the user uh, in California, for example. Which privacy laws will apply? Um, now there, the, there will be, oh, there will always be that confusion. There will, have, there will be that issue um, that, that uh, we have to resolve. I mean, this is an issue in the internet, much more in the metaverse, right? Uh, when, uh, when, when uh, we have to strike a balance between anonymization and privacy and regulation, right? So. Uh, these are really uh, these are really questions uh, that companies and uh, governments will have to answer moving on, uh, while uh, we uh, while we dive deeper into the metaverse. And can crimes happen in the metaverse? Oh yes, definitely yes. I mean, uh, I'm sure most of you have heard about crypto cryptocurrency being stolen, being lost, right? NFTs um, um, going into the hands of the wrong people. Um, since you can trade in the metaverse uh, and uh, you are. Uh, you are probably protected by um, by anonymity. Money laundering is a risk, which is a very important uh, issue for financial institutions like ours, right? Uh, and since uh, you're talking to people uh, in in the metaverse and you're not really chatting with them, like literally talking to them, right? This can be uh, this is a possible venue for terrorist recruitment, illegal deals, you know, inside the metaverse because. Uh, they they probably are from um, these uh, these crooks are probably thinking that hey I'm being monitored if I use Facebook if I if I if I use all of the other social media platforms if I use SMS I can be trapped so why don't I just go to the metaverse and do my bad stuff there right <clears throat> and uh, if crimes happen so let's say uh, you have a shiny new NFT you know uh, that you're showing off in the metaverse and it gets stolen who are you gonna call is it the metaverse, you know, the, the metaverse operator, is it law enforcement? I mean, again, these are issues uh, that uh, needs to be solved and uh, really be talked about by uh, private institutions and governments uh, moving forward. And you have to ask also, is it is it safe to interact uh, with uh, other metaverse users? How do I know? Because how do how do I know uh, if I'm talking to the right person? Because if you're in the metaverse, you're in a virtual reality, you basically Put your trust based on the appearance of the people, the person you're talking to, right? So it's just like reality that if I see someone, I verify that, uh, yeah, that's the voice. Yeah, that's the face. I, that's in instant trust, right? But then what if that account has been taken over? How, no, how do you validate that it's really that person behind that avatar that you're talking to, right? Uh, misinformation uh, from uh, from impersonation or misrepresentation, how do you know? 
if uh, you're really talking to let's say a metaverse moderator at that right um now you and then and, and you're you're and you're sure that the information that you're getting is really official from that company and of course harassment defamation i mean the cyber libel i mean all of, again all of these issues are are present in the internet and they're magnified at a whole together different level uh when we talk about the metaverse so it's not the end of the world, right? I think um, what we need to do if we if if uh, we really want the metaverse to see traction in terms of security uh, is to understand how the metaverse is secured. And um, you have to understand that each metaverse will have its own unique set of security features. As mentioned earlier in my talk, there's no one metaverse. There are a lot of metaverses. So you have to understand how each metaverse is securing their stuff. Uh, and um, as users, there are we are responsible to understand that, uh, hey, this is what the metaverse is securing for me, but I have my own responsibility. Like, um, and, and it really starts with, um, with um, it really starts with hygiene, right? Still selecting your selecting the right passwords, um, making sure that MFA is turned on, making sure that, that you don't get fished, right? Uh, these are these are. You've heard all of these. Uh, these are all these are all basic security stuff that you need to bring when uh, you go to into the metaverse. And social engineering will still be a threat, right? It's still, pretty much the same uh, for for users. But for companies, very important uh, that uh, you re you really implement um, a proper DevSecOps framework in your in your uh, companies because what happens in the metaverse is that. Um, there's really a lot of code. There will be a, there will be, there's a lot of changes that will that will go, uh, and uh, if you waterfall your security testing, trust me, it will be insecure. You will not be able to go through all of that code with all of that velocity. So, you have to you have to automate your security testing, really and uh, really and really make sure that every single piece of code gets tested, uh, and uh, whenever you are designing your products even before you write your first lines of code, even before you deploy your first servers, you are already talking with management and saying that, hey, this is how I want, uh, this, is, this is how I want uh, the metaverse secured, meaning that security should be part of the design. It's security by design, privacy by design, still pretty much the same concepts, right, uh, of how we secure our uh, digital applications. And also very important is that uh, we shift into biometric authentication. Move away from uh, from uh, from passwords. Make sure uh, that uh, you are uh, you are employing stronger authentication that's really that's really linked to the human. Because biometric authentication is so much harder to to break right? um, uh, uh, if you're comparing with uh, SMS based um, on, um, MFA or uh, or other forms of MFA. And since you are running a metaverse, let's say you're a company running a metaverse, you really cannot discount the fact that uh, you need 24-7 monitoring. You have to absolutely make sure that uh, whenever your users are on, your security guys are on. You want to, you want to monitor uh, for cyber attacks, not just cyber attacks, but really fraud. Um, uh, and um, it's, a, it's a very cr critical component to make sure that your users continue trusting you because uh, once People start experiencing bad things in a, in a certain in a certain uh, metaverse, or even or even in a certain app, right? Not even metaverse. If if the financial institution uh, um, starts getting hacked, um, social media pages start getting hacked, people lose trust. So uh, that's um, and they stop you and they stop using your product. So uh, that's gonna be bad uh, for you. Uh, and uh, it's very important uh, how to have a a, a proper threat intelligence. Um, now and uh, making sure uh, that uh, you understand what threats are are coming in are coming into you, right? So it's really a combination of uh, making sure that um, you have your, your OSINT set up, you have paid threat intelligence, and you have um, now you're able to really correlate uh, this this threat intelligence data with your own internal telemetry. Very important, and and uh, you have to think about automating your incident response process. And also very important is that you shift to behavior-based anomaly detection. So this is where AI in cybersecurity really comes in. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, you don't just detect threats based on signatures. You have to detect them based on, uh, based on what they really do. Uh, and um, uh, this allows you faster response because, again, the metaverse is 24-7. Users will be logged on all over the world. So um, uh, 
it's very it's crucial that you respond as fast as you can whenever there are cyber attacks. And probably uh, the most one of the most unique features of uh, the of um, security uh, in metaverse would be to make sure that there's community moderation and reasonable monitoring of user interaction because again crimes can happen in the metaverse money laundering can happen in the metaverse terrorist financing and terrorist recruitment can happen so um you, you want to make sure that uh, you there's some reasonable uh, monitoring over what is being talked about by users uh, then the, and there is proper transparency over permissions and the data that you collect and very important is that you have the capability to respond whenever there is some whenever you see potential threats and start the conversations with law enforcement i think um the law enforcement uh, our, our law enforcement folks will be very interested to see how they can help in this in this new in this new way of living in this new business model you know uh, because um, we want to make sure that uh, the good guys are in first because the bad guys will just keep on coming in right so uh, we we need help here companies cannot do this alone and that's the end of my presentation so uh, thank you very much again uh, for having me today uh, and i hope uh, i was able to impart something uh, well and if you have questions uh, you can email me uh, through jan.insina at maya.ph uh, and again thank you uh, thank you for the to the information security officers group uh, and um, i'll be open for questions